Now then, it's time for uh, Perspective on the programme, and it is exactly 100 years ago today that one of humankind's most important experiments was carried out, a real groundbreaking experiment that occurred during a total solar eclipse and that proved Albert Einstein's theory of general relativity. It was the experiment, if you like, that turned Einstein into an overnight celebrity. Until then, his work had been treated with much scepticism. So what was the experiment? How did it involve a solar eclipse? And what did it prove? Well, with me to explain is George Ellis. He's a South African theoretical physicist, a world leader, if you like, in relative, uh, relativity and cosmology. His work, uh, including a book that he wrote alongside Stephen Hawking called The Large Scale Structure of Space Time. Thanks very much for coming in, talking to us on the programme. I mean, I have to confess, for ordinary folks such as me, this idea is fascinating, but also mind boggling and difficult to understand. Yeah. So explain it to us, if you can. The bending of light. Mm. Yeah, um, well, Einstein thought of this before he had his theory of relativity properly uh, worked out. And basically, gravity pulls everything. And the basic idea was, if it pulls particles in, why doesn't it pull light in? Mm. If it pulls light in, then when you look over there and there's a massive object here, the massive object will pull the light and the object will actually be there, but you will see it over there. And so it will displace the image in the sky. And that's what this experiment was about, Einstein's prediction that it would displace images in the sky. So who did the experiment and what, why did it need to be done during a solar eclipse? Yeah, well, you needed a massive enough object to do that and the obvious one was the sun. Now, the trouble is during the day, the sun is too bright. Uh -huh. And so there's stars behind the sun, you can't see them. So you need the moon to come in front, as shown in your picture. And then the, the main part of the sun's light is, is blocked out and you can see the stars and you can measure the deflection, which is incredibly small. It's 1.75 arc seconds, according to general relativity. Now, at that time, uh, Newtonian theory was predicting half of that value. It was possible that this was wrong and that there wouldn't be any bending at all. So what Eddington was looking for, Eddington was the English astronomer who had learnt about Einstein's theory. And you have to remember the context. This was dur during this time, it was the Second World War, when Einstein published this. Sorry, it was the first of all. And <clears throat> there was a great antagonism between British scientists, Dutch scientists, others to the German scientists. And Eddington, however, was a Quaker, and the Quaker view was that you shouldn't judge people by what nation they belong to, <laughs> but what kind of individuals they were. He acted as the person who publicised general relativity in England, which is a very complex theory. And he said, look, there is this test we can do and we should go and do this test. He persuaded the Astronomer Royal, Frank Dyson, that they should do it and that set the thing underway. Mm. So the idea was to take, go to uh, two places, one off Brazil and one off the coast of Africa, take these photographs and show that the positions of the stars were just this tiny little bit different from what they would if when you took a picture of exactly the same bit of sky when the sun was not there. It's incredible, isn't it? And that whole experiment then, proving what Einstein had been saying all along against what Newton had been saying. That is correct, yes. yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. I mean, if Einstein had still been alive, I'm sure he would have been delighted. <laughs> um, uh, you're actually here in Paris, aren't you, uh, yes. at the moment, for a conference to, to kind of talk about and celebrate um, this achievement. There's, there's a three-day meeting going on at the Institute of Astrophysics to celebrate the life of Eddington, who did many things. He started relativistic astrophysics, but the most famous thing he did was this, and as you said, up and until that time, Einstein, although he, his major work was done in 1905, but nevertheless, that work was not at that time very well known. In fact, it was his 1905 work which got him the Nobel Prize. Mm. But even in 1918, he wasn't well known until this experiment, and it's classic science. You've got a theory, you make a prediction, the images should shift, you go and you test it, and... Bingo, you mm. get a, a, a tick against sure. your theory. That's classic science. Why do you think people are so fascinated by space? I mean, why are you so fascinated by it? Uh, well, it's what underlies how the universe works. It's Gravity is what makes the, 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 the moon going around the Earth, the Earth around the sun. It's what controls how the universe expands. And, of course, the huge things which happened recently is gravitational waves have been detected. Now, this was also another prediction of Einstein. Incredible technology has allowed that to be detected in the past few years, and that is now one of the major areas of astronomy. Mm. 
Yeah. What's next? What's next on the horizon? What are the next big things that, that could emerge? I mean, I'm just thinking back a few weeks ago, we had that incredible picture of, of a black hole, which we all yes. saw for the first time. Yes. Um, I think the main thing that's going to happen for the moment, there, there's a mass of new telescopes out there testing cosmology, various ways, predictions of cosmology. But I think the most interesting one is going to be the um, observation of gravitational waves. This is firstly from two black holes circling each other and then colliding. And I should say the following point. Eddington looked at the bending of light, which was a very, very small one. In the case of a black hole, the gravitational field is so strong that the light goes right around it and can go around many times. And that's what forms the event horizon, the key feature of the black hole, which was what that black hole picture was about. So we're going to see a lot more of that, studies of black holes directly through those kinds of pictures, but indirectly through the way that when they circle each other and coalesce, they give off gravitational radiations and the gravitational radiation telescopes will tell us about how many black holes there are, what masses they have, and so on. So, so, but as I say, this is, in a sense, it's a logical continuation of the measurement of the bending of light. So there's always going to be something else around the corner, you think? And, and the other thing is that a core feature of present-day cosmology is gravitational lending, this bending of light. It's being used to measure how much dark matter there is in the universe. One of the things in the universe is there's this vast amount of matter. We know it's there, we don't know its nature, and the bending of light is one of the ways of testing that the matter is there because it does bend the light and we detect it that way. It's fascinating, isn't it? Thank you very much for coming in on the programme uh, and talking to us today. Good luck with the uh, conference as well. hope that goes well. George Ellis, uh, South African theoretical physicist, thanks very much for being with us on today's edition of Live from Paris. Thank you.